Hello and welcome to Capricorn Makes. I'm Stacy, and as you can see, I'm in a new filming location. It's not terribly new. I used to be over there and now I'm in my sewing corner. Um, I just, I have a big table and my, um, my, I was sitting in my computer chair when I was recording before. Um, but I really disliked, um, the lack of space for me to actually set stuff down. And, um, now that I have more doll stuff coming and now that I have more things that I want to show off, um, we're gonna test this out. So far, I'm pretty happy. Um, I'm in the middle of sort of putting up things on the wall behind me, so this may change a few times before it um, uh, before it sort of settles into its final configuration. But so far, um, I've done a couple of test runs um, on on it, and I'm I'm really happy with um, with this new location. Uh, so the purpose of this video is to show off my try redo wig. Um, which I'm really quite pleased with. So um, it was made out of the purple raffia. Uh, it was a flat um, cellulose raffia, I believe. Um, and I did a 1920s um, flapper raffia wig because um, they actually were a thing then. They were basically just like hats that you'd put on over your own hair um, to give you that flapper look. And they were super shiny, like, and crazy bright colors, like, um, pastel pink and, like, mint green, and, I mean, like, so, so, these are the colors of, like, the ones that I've seen, like, this sort of purpley, like, super shiny baby pink, and then mint, and things like that. Um, and, uh, like, yeah, if you just, if you look up, like, 1920s flapper raffia wig, you'll see all of these photos for these things. Um, so her wig is entirely hand-stitched. Um, I sewed a wig cap, which I actually really like. I'm probably gonna sew all of my wig caps from now on, because I like it so much better than all the extra material that you get with the rubber bands. Um... So I will probably set out a couple of patterns. Um, as you can see, I just have everything stitched in here. Um, uh, ostensibly, the stitching... Oh, let me zoom in for you. Here you go. Um, so yeah, so you can see all of my stitching. It's all. It was all very... Um, haste, not hastily, but just like I was using this as like a, a break for my costume commission, so I was not paying the most attention to it. Now, on the um, original wigs of this type, um, each one of these um, thread sections was actually creating bigger finger waves, but because this is really quite stiff and flat, um, it didn't want to wave particularly well. Uh, though I got enough in there that I'm quite happy. And then at the ends, I just curled them into these little um, overlapping bun shapes. And I really think that the variegation um, worked out really well. Let me bring her over here so you can see it up close. Um, but, and, need to sit down on her head. Um, but yeah, so I'm really, really, where, where are we go? There we go. I'm really pleased with the end result. If I got some different material, I could probably reproduce the, um, look of the original ones pretty easily. I would have to use something like, um, what is the really shiny, uh, embroidery thread called? I can't remember, but, um, that would probably be the right texture, um, and shininess to recreate just how shiny the, um, the original wigs were. Um, and so I decided to kind of run with this theme. Like, this was an accident. Like, I bought this purple stuff on a whim at the store and went, oh, this will be really interesting. And I, because I was thinking of doing, like, um, like these flat paper, um, these, the wigs where, uh, like, they look like drawings because each strand of hair kind of comes up in a loop sort of like that. So you have, like, it looks like ribbons of drawn hair, but it's just 3D paper. I may still actually try and do something like that. I have plenty of this left, and um, um, I think it would be really kind of interesting to see what I can come up with with that. But when I was looking for raffia wigs, I found these, um, like, when they came up, I was like, oh no, no, I have to do that. So um, this was um, not really what I had had intended, but I'm, it was a happy sort of consequence. I'm really quite glad. Um, so going from there, 
Um, I decided to stick with the flapper theme because why not? Um, and I, um, I spent some time, like, traced her little feet. Um, and I, uh, so I spent quite some time sort of, like, pondering all of the little pieces. So I have, like, the insert and I have the, the rounded toe cap out of paper. Um, for the second challenge and then um, like different iterations of like the, the back piece and sort of figuring out what I want where and how and how fun um, and then and then I got a little bit lazy um, like the original challenge is to do just paper you're not supposed to do like paper mache or use other construction anything um, but I knew that I could, if I took time, layer paper to do this, which is the heel for a, uh, like a kitten heel, it's the sole. Um, all right, so um, it is the sole um, for kitten heels out of paper clay. Um, it is still technically paper, right? Right. Um, so these are almost dry um and they do fit her feet um so i've got them both here they're almost dry and then i can start sanding um the proper shape into them um and they are made she does have only flat feet so you can see sort of the angle here is quite flat so when they are down on the ground um you can see her flat foot will fit on there quite fine so there's definitely a left and a right, um, though they're pretty, like her feet are not especially left and righty. So um, the shoes themselves are not as left and righty as they could be. So I still have to sand these and um, maybe add some more material. I'm not sure yet. Like there are visible cracks that w I won't be able to sand out pretty well. Um, and I, I'm going to paint these, I think, the correct color. Um, they just need, I think, a little bit more time to dry. I'll probably give them... I might give them till tomorrow just because this thicker part still feels like it could be a little bit dangerous. Um, but yeah, so once I do that, then I'm going to pick out my paper and, and put those on there. So I'll paint, I'll sand and paint the bases, carve them up a little bit to make them a little bit more refined in shape, uh, and then get those on there. Um, but yeah, so that that will be the shoe portion, and then um, then on to um, on to the the garment uh, portion, which I haven't really thought much about yet, um, because the guidelines are kind of ballpark, um, and I have to look up the specific guidelines for the third part of the challenge, which is like I think there's three stores that you can go to, and it's like a hardware store, a post office, or maybe something else. I'll have to take a look at it and see exactly what the, the rules are. But this is like rules light because this isn't a real challenge. It's just something to get us moving. Uh, and I have to say, like, being able to find out that I liked the sewn wig caps was a huge deal for me um, because the thing that had been putting me off making more wigs was because I really, really, really hated making uh, the wig base. Like, I didn't even mind doing the... Um, uh, like the, the layers of latex or, or anything like that. But I just, I really hated the, like dealing with all of the little bits and the rubber bands and like, I just wasn't enjoying that part of it. Though I like all of the rest of it. Um, but shoes, man, <laughs> shoes might be exactly what I have been wanting to get. Um, I think... There was some more that I was going to talk about, um, but I do have some more videos coming up. My battery is dying, so I'm going to leave it here for now. Um, nice and short. I will check back in again once I have shoes and talk about the other things I was going to talk about. And um, yes, thank you so much for joining me, and I will see you in the next one.